Hello again and welcome back. Uh, this is Christian from Sensa, CCA Wireless. Uh, this is the last video on the Bonjour AirPlay configuration. Uh, I will uh, uh, step you through three uh, items. First is the, uh, I'm going to introduce how the Cisco WLC MDNS uh, was built. It was built over time in three phases, so I will cover that. Um, and then I will take an example of Bonjour filtering, uh, where you can use that and how we actually configure it. I will go through the steps with you. And we will end with the troubleshooting section with the uh, how to troubleshoot uh, uh, problems with MTNS. So let's just uh, get started. So first uh, we see a typical problem when you have a big environment. Uh, with the first versions of the MTNS support you would basically get all instances uh, advertised to your controller and therefore your clients uh, would get a huge list of uh, airplay offerings uh, looking something like this that you see on the screen uh, the problem here is that uh, when you have distributed environment things can get a little bit confusing especially if uh, you are not uh, naming your apple tvs according to location etc so uh, in all cases it, it is of course necessary to put some sort of a pin lock which is uh, possible in in apple tv for for example put a pin lock on on the Apple TV. So when somebody tries to present, uh, the projector will will and the Apple TV will display a pin lock on the screen that is uh, you are trying to 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 use. So that will synchronize the, that uh, you are actually on the correct meeting room, etc., to use it, and also. This also, you know, stops some pranks, you know, use your imagination when when uh, people are outside of the meeting and display some inappropriate content or, or some jokes like that. Use your imagination for that one. So, uh, Cisco actually came with the MTNS support in three phases. Um, the phase one was just to move the uh, MTNS gateway, the component that listens to and snoops the MTNS uh, Bonjour uh, offerings, and this is the, uh, keeps them in a central database on the controller. That was a huge step because before you needed to have a separate device doing that. You could have a specific Linux platform that would do that on your network, being VLAN truck uh, on your network. It was, you know, a little bit more complex than, than it is today, actually. Um, but this was, uh, this introduced as well uh, that we had support all layer three, so we didn't have to install this Linux system or whatever we were using to find the airplay services uh, distributed around our network. In phase two, there was uh, MTNS AP support for one. There were a lot of other features, but this was one of the most significant ones. Uh, this one actually is pretty cool because uh, uh, let's say you have a distributed environment, uh, segmented network, of course. Uh, you have controller in your central location somewhere, and you have APs distributed over layer, layer 3 networks all over the place. So what if you had a wired uh, air, air, airplay service on that remote location where the wireless LAN controller would not hear it because it's not wirelessly connected, so the AP 
over kappa would not be able to help you in this case. But there is this MTNS AP support, which actually means that the AP, the AP will be configured in VLAN trunk mode, and it can listen to up to 10 VLANs, listen to those VLANs uh, for AirPlay Bonjour service offerings. So you have a wired Bonjour service, uh, you have a, a wired Apple TV, for some reason you cannot have it Wi-Fi or security reasons forbid you to do that. You can listen on that remote AP, you can listen on the wire, and when you pick up the service on the wire, you will send it via cap up. So the AP will send it to the controller, and we get the, the, the service offerings uh, centrally known for what we want to do with it. So that was a pretty nice uh, feature and uh, solved a lot of lot of issues in, uh, in, 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 in uh, bigger environments. Phase three was actually a big step as well, which is the most recent phase. That was the Bonjour policies. The Bonjour policies, uh, uh, basically, you can be more flexible on what to offer, where to offer, and so on. And so the next slide actually is explaining that a little bit better. Um, so you have like, let's say for school, uh, for example, um, you can now with this new page three uh, offering that the Cisco made, uh, you can now uh, do a specific profiles. So you can have a teacher having uh, access to specific uh, services, and then you can have the students uh, have something else, maybe more restricted and so on. So we, this one is pretty pretty nice uh, when you have a big environment. And actually it has been very handy for me in my implementation for, for a big school environment where many schools distributed in different locations. So in that case we uh, we use the AP group uh, in each location to actually uh, determine uh, what uh, airplay services were, were, were seen when you were on location. So you didn't have the whole list of airplay devices, you only had the list uh, appropriate to your location. And if you move around to another location, then you would have that list uh, where, where that would be local to you. So that was um, that was a big, uh, big, big step for for this service to actually uh, be less confusing for the users, for the end users. So how to configure the Bonjour filtering phase three? Uh, there are four steps. Uh, first, we need to enable the MTNS policy on top of the MTNS snooping feature, with, which we already have enabled. MTNS policies configuration, we need to configure our policies and decide how it's going to look like, uh, what, we are, uh, what we are trying to filter and so on. And we have a local policy configuration where we actually are matching uh, different uh, scenarios, we are matching uh, uh, strings, we are matching uh, locations, etc. Uh, will you, you get a clearer picture when I start to configure it with you on what that actually means. And then we have a WLAN configuration, the last step to enable the policy. So let's just get started with this one. So the uh, MTNS uh, is still like this. We have this global snooping enabled, but this one we need to enable for the uh, for the MTNS policy, the phase three. So we need to enable this one. Um, don't panic when you press that one and apply it. Uh, you probably all your air playlist will go away and the user will complain that there's nothing visible anymore. 
This is because uh, we still need to configure the policies, what they are going to do, and so on. So we, we need to do two extra steps. But you can always go back and and when you're troubleshooting and, and take out the tick box if you if you if you need to go back. So uh, under the policies. MTNS policies, you have, we have a little test here that I'm going to show you. We have these options. Uh, what this means is that uh, I can manually put in a MAC address of, uh, of an Apple TV or whatever to belong to this policy. See, in this case, um, I have already configured a test MAC address. Apple TV that I have in this location, I will specify the location type as an AP group. So the location can be uh, like a, if you have an AP group per building or something, you can specify that, which is pretty handy. The role name I would like to I would like to this policy to be enforced if the role name matches this string that I have here, for example. And you will see better in my next step what I mean by that. So in order to add more uh, more uh, Apple TVs, I would simply go like this. Apple TV 2, AP group. I would, uh, you see here, I can also to AP name, AP location, but I'm going to do AP group because that applies to many APs. And I would do that uh, like uh, like uh, Nordica or something. Simply add this guy, and now you see the list is increasing. Uh, you can control all of this from Cisco Prime. Uh, and use uh, Cisco Eyes, the identity services engine, to help you to make it more scalable and uh, even let the users uh, have control of their school or whatever their you were, or scenario you are having. But for sake of simplicity, I will I will do this only on the controller, so you get the you you get the core understanding of how it really works. So now I have configured to uh, enable the policy. I have done one MTNS policy with the two devices. And then I turn over to the actual policy, the local policies, where I differentiate what I want to match. So here you see the role string that I had before, radius users. You see that I had that before on the MTNS policy. Radius users, so that's what I'm uh, delivering uh, through this AP group. So, security, local policies, test, uh, matching uh, radius users, and matching. You can match a lot of EAP types here. You can match uh, if you have only preset key, or you might need to do this, set to none. But I'm matching EPTLS here because that's the most secure one. And I can also uh, decide on uh, what devices to support in this scenario. And I'm going to say, like, uh, for example, in this case, we are focusing on Apple devices. So I will uh, uh, put in an Apple device at that one. Um, you see it appearing here, and I can uh, Arupa AP. Oh. Um, Apple I device, it's probably a gen general generic term for Apple devices, so I have something like this. I can enforce a lot of things. I can enforce access list, VLAN. I can enforce application visibility profile, which is pretty cool. Um, 
In this case, I want to keep it simple. I'm, I'm only testing, so I will. I want to enforce. I want to make sure that everybody gets this MTNS profile because that's where I have all my services configured. I know that they're all there. All of the services I need to support. So this is how I want to have it. Uh, in this case, uh, you can see you have also scheduled active hours, and so you're pretty flexible on when your policy is kicking in. So we'll, I will uh, apply it like this. So now I have this uh, local policy ready for use. The third step, of the fourth step, sorry, is that on my test SSID, I need to add this policy. So you see here that uh, I need to set a priority index, so I'll set one here because I have only one. And this test, the local policy, this is the one that is fed from the security local policies that I was just uh, before. And I simply add this on the SSID. And uh, this is now ready to use. So if I have the, those Apple TVs uh, that I configured before on the MTNS policies, if I have those uh, joined to my network in this particular, from this particular AP group, should be the same actually if I want to be practical, but this is just an example, so bear with me. Um, so, in this case, uh, yeah, those Apple TVs would be available for users matching uh, EPTLS and uh, matching that they are I Apple I devices or Apple devices, and they should uh, then only see these Apple TVs. Uh, in a big environment, of course, uh, I would add more groups to number two or something like that and uh, I would put in more devices, more Mac addresses, other Apple TVs, maybe another role, uh, doesn't matter, it could be the same role, uh, but the key thing is that uh, in this case uh, another uh, AP group. In that case, uh, the next building would only see the appropriate Apple TVs uh, and other, other AirPlay services that are in, in, in use. So that is the whole idea between the, uh, about 